Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for joining us today and for your testimony. I wanted to uh, begin with uh, Lieutenant General Rudder and talk specifically about the CH-53K uh, King Stallion heavy lift helicopter. Last year we heard about how great this bird was going to be, the strongest, the smartest, the best heavy lift helicopter that money can buy. And now we're hearing reports that the initial operation, operational capability milestones uh, that are set for this December are not going to be met, that that's going to have, have to be pushed back, that there are a whole list of elements there that have to be looked at. So the initial operation test and evaluation may not occur until 2021. There's a whole list of, of design deficiencies, and I want to point some of those out. The issues reported are airspeed indication anomalies, tail boom and tail rotor structural problems, low reliability for main rotor gearbox, fuel system anomalies, overheating of main rotor dampers, and hot gas impingement on aircraft structures. A list of ones that are, you know, if you're a, um, a pilot such as uh, the, the great pilots you have in the Marine Corps and with your experience, those things are concerning about where we are with that. So uh, my questions really are threefold. Uh, what's being done to correct those issues? Uh, what's, what's, what's in the pipeline? Is this year's budget request enough to make sure that we correct these design deficiencies? And as we're looking at the ability to deploy this helicopter, are we on track to deploy it in 2023 or is it going to be 2024? Because I think making sure we have that helicopter available to replace the Echoes is a key element. So I wanted to get your perspective. Uh, thank you, Congressman. And you're exactly right. Uh, it is important. Heavy lift is still a, a really a DOD requirement and a Marine Corps requirement still, especially for distributed operations. This airplane, last year we moved it uh, from testing in West Palm Beach and we moved it to Pax River where we put it through its paces. We brought it out to Colorado, did high altitude testing, we banged it around in the dirt out there and we found some things. And uh, we found some things because good Marine test pilots and Navy uh, and the Naval Enterprise found things that needed to be fixed. So the delays that you see right now is to make sure we get it right. And I think I'll, I may even defer to Mr. Nagan and talk about how we're negotiating the next few contracts in there, is that we're going to build concurrency into our next contracts. So when the Marines get a, get a helicopter, it's going to have those things. All the things you just talked about are going to be fixed before we give it to the fleet. If I back out from that, this aircraft did some unbelievable things this past year. It lifted 36,000 pounds. It still can go you know, 100 miles, 27,000 pounds, three times what the 53 Echo can do. Now the question is to fix these technical deficiencies that we have, and they're all fixable, and uh, at this part of the program, and give the Marines, the maintainers especially, and our great pilots uh, the aircraft they deserve. But I think we're on the right track. You'll see where uh, we uh, put in this year's budget, we put what we need to fix as well as, you know, manage our procurement a bit uh, to make sure that we don't get ahead of ourselves uh, but if you let us continue on with the money we've asked for this year and the money that we've asked for for next year, we're going to fix this and we're going to deploy it in 2024. Thank you.